Hello, this is David Tuchel, manager of the Raman Applications Lab at Hariba Scientific in Edison, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to another in our How to Raman educational video series. This particular video is about fast Raman imaging of few layer molybdenum disulfide. And uh, so let's begin by considering some of the important aspects of Raman imaging and the materials related to that as well as the experimental details. The first thing and the most important is that the greater the contrast that one finds in the chemical bonding and the solid state structure in heterogeneous materials or samples leads to greater spectral contrast which leads to greater contrast in the imaging. So spectral contrast and imaging contrast are intimately related. The second point is that the greater the spectral contrast, the faster one can actually perform Raman imaging. Now we get to the experimental details. The motion of the stage and the capture of the data in conjunction with the motion of the stage uh, can be very important. The data that I will be showing you today and the images generated from them were acquired using a Hariba Explorer Raman spectrometer and with a Hariba Sincerity camera that for the 100, the 50, and the 10 millisecond integration times were controlled by SWIFT. And uh, on the next slide I'll explain what the SWIFT mapping is. The areas uh, that we mapped are 10 by 10 micrometer areas in 300 nanometer spatial increments with 532 nanometer excitation. And uh, as I said, we're using SWIFT and here are our integration times uh, and those are times per point. So 10 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds and one second per point. And finally, will show you how the application of a classical least squares uh, algorithm and there are other chemometric tools can really help you in imaging particularly fast Raman imaging. Here uh, in this session we're imaging the spatial heterogeneity of molybdenum disulfide flakes on a silicon substrate and our image contrast is improved by the chemometric tools and what I hope you'll see is that the Raman imaging is quite complementary to the optical microscopy that you see. All right, now what is SWIFT? SWIFT is the acronym for scanning with incredibly fast times. And it basically uh, involves the detection and hardware communication, uh, meaning communication between the camera and the electronic stage and its motion to enable per pixel measurement times as fast as 7 milliseconds. So what we have then are measurements that are done on the fly. This uh, stage is continuously moving and the stage speed is calculated from the acquisition time that's set so it's controlled by the camera and you have a synchronization signal sent from the stage to uh, the CCD and computer memory is used to store the spectra and the data are transferred over a high-speed uh, USB connection and the shutter is kept open uh, throughout the entirety of the data acquisition. Now that we've briefly discussed the important considerations for Raman imaging and some of the experimental details, uh, let's take a look at the, at the results. In the lower right hand corner here you see a reflected light image of a flake of molybdenum disulfide on a silicon substrate. So here's the disulfide and the dark area which is a little bit out of focus happens to be the uh, silicon substrate. In the upper left hand corner you see the entire hyperspectral data set of spectra collected over this 10 micrometer by 10 micrometer area in 300 nanometer increments. And uh, in the uh, lower left hand corner you see the Raman image of 
of this particular sample generated by the red and green brackets where the red bracket is surrounding the single Raman peak of silicon and the green br bracket is surrounding uh, two of the peaks of the molybdenum disulfide these two here that you see and this spectrum in the upper right hand corner is the so-called cursor spectrum that is to say that spectrum corresponds to uh, the spectrum uh, or, or the spectrum associated with the location of the crosshairs in either of the images below so now we see silicon and now we see essentially just the molybdenum disulfide and we get get to the edge uh, then we see uh, some silicon coming through so the th important consideration right here for you is that uh, the image was generated in 300 nanometer increments with one second integration time and so this entire image took uh, 22 minutes and 59 seconds to generate and this is what you see using the peak bracket method now if we click on an area here let's uh, click on the silicon and we then highlight the uh, cursor spectrum we can then use the classical least squares fitting routine add the silicon uh, spectrum as one of our components and now we go back here and find basically the molybdenum disulfide add that component and now you see we just so readily then can form a Raman image based on not the uh, uh, the bracketing of the peaks but classical least squares analysis of uh, of this image alright so let's go back to our hyperspectral data set this is for one second now let's look at the results from 100 millisecond integration time and uh, so let's run again our classical least squares and we just enter that click on an area of molybdenum disulfide enter that component and there you see the image and let's now move on to that's and this is a 100 millisecond integration time per point now let's look at 50 millisecond integration time per point and so you see the signal to noise is dropping because of our lower integration time however in situations like this where you basically have good chemical contrast shall we say between the uh, between the spectral information of the uh, silicon and the molybdenum disulfide then the signal to noise ratio that one needs to produce the image is not as great as one might expect okay so now we again generate our uh, our classical least squares image okay there's our silicon component and now our molybdenum disulfide component and again this is for 50 millisecond per point integration time so that's pretty fast imaging and uh, let's drop it down now to 10 milliseconds so we went from one second to 100 milliseconds and now we have 10 millisecond per point integration time so we're starting to reach the probably the limits of uh, what we're able to do with this particular material system nevertheless as we see that the signal to noise has been dropping of course with the uh, decreased integration time we can still based upon the entire spectrum and using classical least squares we can generate our images based on the spectral contributions and now we click on the uh, molybdenum disulfide component and so here then is our classical least squares image in the middle for um, for a 10 millisecond per point in integration time so here's 10 milliseconds per point 50 milliseconds per point 
100 milliseconds per point and one second per point. I hope uh, by going through this demonstration here you could see the uh, the importance of the chemical contrast in, as manifest in the different spectra and how if one has that then the opportunities for fast Raman imaging are indeed great. All right now that we've seen uh, the data collected and had a discussion then about uh, uh, about the extraction of spectral information from the spectra to render the Raman images. Uh, let's make a, a summary or let's summarize a comparison of Raman images that are based on uh, the bracketing of the Raman peaks and then uh, in the next slide we'll show a comparison of the images based on classical least squares uh, analysis of the hyperspectral data sets. And so what I hope you can see here is that in moving from one second per point at a total of essentially 23 minutes of integration time to a tenth of that time, 2 minutes 45 seconds, where you go to 100 milliseconds per point, down to 50 milliseconds per point, you can really cut your times and still maintain uh, pretty decent imaging and finally at 10 milliseconds per point uh, we're starting to get some fairly grainy image which is consistent with the signal to noise of the spectrum and that's the important thing to remember here is that when when performing imaging based on say a single spectral peak or or two adjacent peaks as we have done today then more so than ever your uh, the quality of your image and the contrast of your image, the signal to noise of your image, is really based upon the signal to noise of your spectra. Now, here are those same data sets treated to classical least squares algorithm, and you can see that if we now incorporate the entire spectrum in this CLS routine, we really don't lose nearly as much of the quality, the contrast, and the signal to noise in the image as we go from one to one second per point to 100 milliseconds per point all the way down to 10 milliseconds per point. So just take in for a moment the difference here. We're talking about an image that required 23 minutes to generate here and down here 47 seconds that's that that's a pretty uh, substantial improvement in speed for being able to uh, generate the images so let me conclude then by saying that uh, again in understanding Raman imaging and fast Raman imaging the important consideration is that the greater the contrast in chemical bonding and solid-state structure will lead to greater spectral contrast which of course leads to better contrast in the imaging. And the greater the spectral contrast, the faster one is going to be able to perform that imaging. And finally, uh, the use of swift mapping, wherein the sincerity or the synapse camera is controlling stage movement and is communicating with the stage such that you have constant stage motion and timing of the camera with the stage motion with the shutter always open uh, gives you a real significant improvement in, uh, in your speed for fast Raman imaging. If you have any questions about the, about the material presented here or uh, the work that was done, please don't hesitate to contact me at 732-494-8660 and my extension is 8103. Thank you.